Well, hello everybody and welcome to this week's episode of Fantastic Female Fridays. My name is Susan Hayes Fullerton and it's a delight to be here on what is probably one of the last days in the office for 2020 and what a delight it is to share it with you. Well, when we, when I say we, the, the, te- the production team and I were talking about the last episode of the year, we did have a think about what it might be. And as you know, we had a festive themed episode two weeks ago when we put the spotlight on the retail sector. And uh, we also then thought about, well, you know, do we kind of make it Christmassy? What do we do? And I have to say, I put forward the idea that we have the theme that we have today, which is how to celebrate the small wins so that we can power up the big ones. Now, for those of you who haven't been here before, as I say, my name is Susan and I'm the host of this show. And the whole idea of Fantastic Female Fridays is to give you an environment to learn about the stock market in such a way where you can develop your knowledge and your understanding, but also your confidence. That's what I want most of all uh, here today with you and right throughout the series. We started this, we started this show in the middle of the year. I have to say 2020, one of the defining characteristics for me has certainly been starting this show and you have made that possible by being here today if you're here live or if you're watching our our recording. So as I always do, just going to tell you a couple of things first. First of all, uh, I'd love to hear where you're tuning in from. So if you're on a desktop, you can pop over to the right hand side where the chat is currently going on and just pop in where you're tuning in from. But if you're on a mobile device and I have a mobile device right here to make sure I can see what you're seeing, uh, what you can do is under the like button Uh, sorry, beside the like button in the middle, there is live chat. And in there, if you tap on live chat there, you can type in uh, where you might be tuning tuning in from. Now, I've just got a notification there to turn up my volume. So I'm just going to do that now. And I'm just going to check in there with the guys just to make sure you can tell me if, uh, if that is sufficient. And also, of course, what I'm going to do is I'm going to get... Uh, yeah bring my mic there a little closer as well that might be helpful okay so again just a shout out there to my own team you can you can let me know right so where are we tuning in from uh we have somebody here from florida we have somebody here greetings from london uk um uh, let me see is that arkansas i think uh vancouver uh vancouver island uh hello from detroit and michigan um i'm hearing from california wonderful really really delighted to have have you all in and uh and uh, and oh chester as well oh brilliant brilliant that's super delighted to hear that um well and please do keep the chat coming that's precisely what uh what what we'd love what we'd love right throughout um now i'm just also i can just see there that the team are telling me that the sound is very low so they're just telling me to uh, use the slider there on obs and i'm going to do that okay so that ha- i've just moved that there um just there guys you might again just tell me if uh, we're okay i see there's somebody here from ireland wonderful um also somebody from new jersey uh somebody from chicago okay so uh, i can see all right that a few people are just mentioning there to me about about the sound so um again just going to check in one more time there with the with the production team um julian from hertfordshire okay great to hear great to hear you uh, great to see that you're here and I again just going to check in there uh, again I believe that um, okay so they're telling me now that the sound is higher okay that's good to hear anyway and as I say I've turned the volume right up and uh, make sure yep make sure to use the mic auxiliary that's what I'm doing there guys yep just letting you know don't worry everyone who's here we will make sure that uh, we take care of this um absolutely we'll we'll make sure that the uh, that we sort this out so i'm just going to ask the team there if there's anything else that i can do um don't know if there's anything else as i say i have, have my mic right here don't know if that if that helps uh just to make sure that it's literally right there beside me so if there's anything else there that i can do um please do okay it's getting better that's good that's good to hear sound is fine in california that's that's great jack uh Okay, um, yeah, I'm turning it up there and they also tell me to turn up uh, the gain on the back of the mic. Okay, how about that? Is that better? Sounds fine here in Boston as well. 
um okay and i so I've, i've turned up the game there guys so today's content is all around the 10 things um the 10 key wins that brilliant thanks thanks guys okay delighted that we're back on track um the 10 things that i have found to be really helpful this year in the in the markets and i'm gonna gonna share a cu- couple of things with you so let's let's dive straight in um so delighted there guys that we're, we're back on track there thanks million okay so first of all i'll tell you one of the key things that people find really difficult to get right in the market and that is that how to hold on to your winners so that they win for long enough and i know myself that there has been times when i have been in a position where i thought okay that stock has made enough for me now or I've made a reasonable gain on that and then I sell and then I watch the stock double. And I, I've i learned how to crack this code this year. So what I'm going to do is that I'm going to show you it in an example of a stock that um, that I have right now. So I'm just going to uh, just going to pop across over here. So I'm going to show you here a stock that I've shown you before, but I'm just going to open up a graph here. And this stock is ASM.AS. Now that's not to be confused. That's not to be confused with the stock ASM that you might be familiar with in the US. This is a Dutch stock. Okay, so just to give you a really, really quick background on this, what I did originally is that I sold an option on it. I sold a put option back in June. I'm gonna gonna scroll right in here now. Gonna 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 scroll right in. Uh, there we go. Here and uh, here and the six months. Okay, so slightly more. And back here in June, I sold an option on this stock. The reason was I. It was its stock was one of the top 10 VST stocks. In fact, at one stage, it was the top stock in Vectorvest Europe. Number one, uh, number two is that it had a reasonably good P ratio. So the P ratio um, was round about 22. And overall, I could see that the RT, you know, the RT was, was pretty high. But look at the earnings, like look at these beautiful earnings, starting the bottom left hand corner and moving up here to the top right. So anyway, sold an option. Um, the option expired worthless, kept my premium, happy days, sold another one. And I told people about this the night I was on Trending Thursdays, it was round about, round about the end of September, sold another one to expire in October. So what happened? Well, look what happened here is that the stock started to fall off and I ended up having to take on the stock. So, you know, that's what happens when you sell a put and I didn't close it early. Now, Here's the thing, though, is that I went on to buy it. My strike price for the stock was 145. And as you can see what happened here, the stock really did fall. Uh, it fell down as far as about 121. Anyway, I still had faith in it. I was still happy. But look what has happened since, right? Look what's happened since. So the question is, like those of you who have been on this show before, you know that I'm I'm a I'm an options woman. And as a result, I thought to myself, hmm, I've made two lovely premiums here. Stock is no longer at the top 10 BST. Um, it had fallen down because loads more stocks had risen up. What do I do? Now, earnings were still rising nicely. They continue to do so. PE ratio was still within a range of between 21 and 25. So still, still okay. But here is what I was looking at. So I was looking at a stock that was rising, 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 rising. Okay, we had a nice bit of a gap up here. Then it continued to rise, fell back there a little bit. As you can see, it's been rising, rising. And yesterday we had a doji. Now I checked... I checked the market today, it's down slightly today. But the thing is, is that how do I understand if I should sell the stock or sell a covered call? And here's the key thing that I decided to do this year is, you know where, you know where the answer is? It is hiding, as they say, in plain sight. I'm gonna turn off everything else except I am going to put on RT. And I'm gonna look here at relative timing uh, let me just add it on here now. Is it, do I have it there already? Uh, yeah, sorry, there it is. Um, RT is right there. And the thing is, is that for those of you who aren't familiar with RT, RT is relative timing. It's an indicator that Vectorvest has that looks at the market, but it specifically looks at direction, whether it's going up or down, magnitude, how quickly it's going up or down. And in addition, it's also looking at the dynamics, so whether it's very volatile. Now, look at that. Look at that graph. Therefore, why would I have sold that stock? Why would I have sold that stock or sell a covered call in that stock when I could see the RT was clearly rising? The buyers were pushing the sellers up. Now, uh, so uh, somebody says, what options are you selling naked puts? Yes, it was a naked put. The reason was 
because I was happy to take on the stock. As you know, I ended up doing it. But the key thing here is that when you look at a stock like this rising, obviously I could analyze from a technical analysis point of view. I know I could, but here, here's all I needed to do. Here is all that I needed to do. Just look at this. RT pushing up, pushing up, pushing up, pushing up, pushing up. So there is no reason for me to sell that, that upside. So as a result, I didn't. I didn't sell a covered call. I didn't sell a stock. I didn't sell it at all. I am simply happy to hold this stock. And we'll see what happens. We will see what happens. Got a doji there yesterday, as I say. Um, market's likely down today. You know, we'll see. We'll see how it goes over the next while. Um, but I'm very, very happy with the stock. And I'm super happy that I didn't say, you know what? Got two lovely premiums. I've already got got to my um, to my strike price. Gone beyond my strike price now by at least... Uh, by at least 10%. And rather than trying to use emotion to say, oh yeah, I think I'll just pull the plug now. No, 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 that's not the case at all. What I'm doing is that I'm sticking with it. And as the RT is rising, I'm happy to go with it. Now, do you want to see another one where I made the same decision? And RT helped me make that decision. This is a stock that I sold an option on years ago. And I bought, for the same reason, top 10 BSD stock. I always look at that. Evotech, Evotech in Germany. And don't worry, I have plenty of US stocks as well, by the way. Um, but here we go, Evotech in Germany. Let me show you here. Let me show you. I must have this stock at least five years. Again, lovely, lovely. Moving from the bottom left up to the top right. Sold an option on it. Ended up holding the stock. Um, dividend uh, isn't a dividend on it. Um, so I got a lovely premium on it at that stage. And as you can see, been rising, rising, rising. Had a really great day yesterday. up 5% yesterday and as you can see here again why would I sell why would I sell I took I took um, a group of people through it on not on this but on my uh, European question and answers webinar uh, that I had earlier on in the year and I took people through it and I said I have to make a decision about am I going to sell the stock am I going to sell a covered call or what am I going to do and this is all I did was that I just checked well what's happening with RT is RT telling me the buyers are pushing up Um, up against the sellers and they're winning well if they are why would I sell the upside in a covered call much and all as I'm super happy to sell options much and all as I'm super comfortable in using options still in all there are times for those uh, to happen and there's times not for them so that's my first win my first small win of this year and that is celebrate the fact <laughs> I'm celebrating anyway that I now have a win rather than saying okay I won back a loss or happy that I got up past 10% is one of the key critical ways that people make a mistake in the stock market is that they don't hold their winners for long enough. And this year, I have now cracked my own code. And you know, RT has been here forever. I know that. But actually, I've often used RT for from a buying point of view, which I'm going to talk about, etc. But this is what I've truly used as my guide over uh, over the past while because I've had some lovely stocks that are that are do- doing some, some great things. Okay, now, second one is... What about when I'm buying stocks? So what about when I'm buying? I'm telling you about when I have a position. What about when I'm buying? So let's pop across over here to the US now for a moment. Okay, so I'm going to go over here to my US, uh, to, the, to the US over here. And I'm going to show you a time that I made a decision. Some of you will know this if you've been on the show before. But um, I'm going to tell you about a time that I made a decision using the same indicator. Again, guys, relative timing looks at direction, magnitude, and the dynamics of the stock price, right? So that's what it does is it's it looks at things like whether the buyers are pushing the sellers up or whether it's the other way around. And the other thing to tell you is that it's quite weighted on the short term. So it 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 basically, the data is built over a day, a week, a month, and a year. So obviously the the weight is on more of, more of the short term. So it really is, it's very, very good for anybody who's trying to make decisions about about positions in in the very very near term which anytime you buy a stock ultimately that's that's what you're doing okay now let me go and let me show you about a time that i made this decision so this time i'm going to take it to another graph here and this was hecla mining hl hecla mining hl right hecla mining and in this right so you can see here what happened with with this stock now i haven't been in it for ages and ages and ages this was a position that i took in may And what I did was I was back here in May, right? And if you look back here, back here, uh, 19th of May to be to be precise, right? So so what I could see here, right, back over here was look at the speed of that. Just look at the speed of that. This RT is telling me that the market is absolutely, not the market, but the stock is absolutely bouncing off the bottom. Now, of course, I, ca- I couldn't see this because it didn't happen. 
when when I was back here. But here we are kind of around about the end of April and the confirmed calls and everything are all are all looking good. But of course, the world is full of massive uncertainty. So this stock here that I'm looking at, right, has a sell recommendation. Sell recommendation. Now, again, any of you that knows me knows I do not buy stocks with sell recommendations. However, I was taking a very, very short term approach, which again, isn't usually like me. But we were in a very, you know, we were very, very different, different time at this stage. So here's what I did was I simply looked at the speed at how RT was changing. That's all I did. So even though it had a sell recommendation, I could see that, yes, the RT hadn't broken over one. But what I could see, what I could clearly see here was that the RT was moving really, really, really quickly. So again, sold enough. Well, I sold sold several contracts of that. Now, a uh, great question came in here. Is RSI the same as RTI? Okay, so I'm specifically referring to RT, which is relative timing. RSI is a different indicator. Now, if you want to put on RSI, you can. All, all you have to do is pop over here to add parameter in here in technical analysis. And then you can put over here, uh, you can put in RSI, which of course, to those of you who may not be familiar with the term, that's the relative strength indicator. So it's it's not the same, because uh, you know the way in RSI that there's there's certain levels and everything. Um, that it's it's not the same at all. RT is very simple. It's a proprietary indicator. You'll only find it vector rest. And that is that above one is favorable, below one is unfavorable. Also, just just um, can I just give a shout out there to, just to the team, um, the production team. Guys, can I just ask you, will you just pop the link for the free stock analysis into the chat, please? So just to the person who put in that question, if you would like to test out the RT of any stock you're interested in, all you need to do is just go on to the free stock analysis, put in the code, of your ticker code, and then from there, you can actually analyze the RT of your own stock as well. And you can compare it to your own analysis. So just as I say, just a shout out there to the team in the US. If you could just pop in the link for the free stock analysis report in for Incognito Awesome, uh, that would be great. Thanks, guys. Okay, so back here anyway, I simply decided, okay, here I see an RT exploding. And you know the beautiful thing about selling puts, right? The beautiful thing about selling put options is that the stock doesn't have to do an awful lot in order for you to generate a significant return. It, it, it's, it can be very, very effective in, in doing that. So as a result, um, that's what I did. Now, here is why it's a small win and not a big win is if I had bought the stock, if I had bought the stock back when I was thinking of doing it, um, back over here. So let's just say if I look back here, back here. So if I had bought the stock round about 18th of May, uh, it would have been a 299. And the stock would have more than doubled, more than doubled at, at this stage. In fact, it's back up there to, to 6.29 now. In fact, I wouldn't have even needed to wait that long, up to 6.42 uh, by the 6th of August. Now, I sold a put to expire at the end of the summer, and I didn't, I didn't have to wait that long at all. Uh, as you can see here, the stock really, really jumped dramatically. So I simply bought back my put option and closed out my position, and we lived happily ever after. But the key point I'm trying to make to you is that I let RT help me make that decision again. Uh, I, I made sure that that uh, relative timing was the key thing that I was looking at. Because again, it was a really short term thing that was happening. The market was changing. It was exploding off the bottom. But I needed I needed a guide. Uh, I needed a guide to be able to, to help me to, to, to do that. Now, Bruce says, I realize RT and RSI are different, but the slope of them looks very similar. Yeah, okay. Uh, let me just put on the parameter there and I'll just show you then uh, RSI over here. Um, yeah, so I would say here it looks like, yeah, they might be similar. But if you, if you look here then, Bruce, see here the way RSI was falling, whereas RT was being maintained. Um, and that is because, you see, again, what specifically we're referring to is a week, a month, uh, sorry, a day, a week, a month and a year. So the the way in which it's actually programmed in the back in in the back end is is a little bit different. And as I say here, the RSI uh, when it's you know below thirty and over seventy, we don't have levels like that. Um, it's not oversold when it goes below uh, thirty, or may, or maybe overbought when it goes over seventy. It's simply above one is favorable, below one is unfavorable. So just want to uh, just want to make that point there. Okay, so that was my second win. My second win was using RT in order to find simply exploding stocks. Now, can I show you something that I think is really cool, right? I think it, this, this is really cool, is that if you want to find those again, depending on the timing, of course, the market and so on, is pop over here to Unisearch, 
okay and this is a simple thing now i can't unfortunately make this screen any bigger so i'm going to, going to talk you through it for anybody who's on a mobile device and i'm going to put in here the stock whereby the the rt here the rt is uh, greater than uh i'm going to say where it's greater than one today but here's the cool thing um i am now going to go to my rt here sorry before i do that i'm going to go back to two weeks i'm going to go back two weeks ago and i'm going to look for rt to be less than one and you know what this does is it basically reveals to us here it basically reveals to us stocks where it's just broken rt it's just broken over one it's gone from unfavorable to favorable in the last two weeks and run the search and if i just going to run the search there now and uh i'm just going to take just going to take say the, the, the first stock here just to just to have a look at it and i all i want to do is now there you go i can show you there the, the, the shape of the graph now you see here the way the rt has just exploded here that's the type of hecla mining stock that i was looking for and so far so far it shows no sign of stopping anyway um that's for sure look at it there uh look at it go um look at it go uh, let me just scroll in there now so i can get the past let's say the, the, the past five days there you go you can see that the, the stock has been really jumping and that type of a search where rt two week rt two two weeks ago below zero below one sorry and rt above one today it will actually show you that the stocks that are pushing it now um f12 invest asks me how do you know it's the buyer pushing it up i'll tell you exactly how i know uh is let me just scroll right in here now right in okay i'm gonna go right right in here now so this now this chart is now a five minute chart you see here what's going on is this is what we call a window and at the bottom are uh, candlestick um but let's let's just call it call it a window here the, the reason the, the, how i always um okay so in I, again there's loads of questions coming in here which is super right so so keep keep them coming look here you see here at the bottom right is that if if there is a line down under the candlestick right if we call that's called a wick right if it, if it goes underneath then we know that the sellers because obviously who like who pushes down prices it's not buyers sellers do so we know the seller pushed the price down below below the wick here right down here now the thing is that there are the sellers didn't didn't win they they, they there was actually this is where the stock opened uh, when I say opened on that particular five minute chart, which is 12 noon. And then you can see the buyers pushed it up. The buyer, the only way that the price can go up is if people buy the stock. The only way the price goes down is if people sell the stock. So at, at the start of that five minute interval, here you have the buyers, they've pushed it right up. Now the sellers pushed it a little bit down again, because you can see the price went up a little bit just over here. It's hard to show you there now when my line is on it, but if, if I just go off. So you see there the way the wick slightly goes up and then the sellers pushed it down again a little bit. Now, over here, then, you can see the same thing happened. So then the buyers pushed it up again. But over here, this is called a doji, D-O-J-I. And this is where the buyers and sellers kind of had a little bit of a, you know, they kind of had a little bit of an argument. The buyers tried to push it up. The sellers tried to push it down. And we can see this because the wick above and below the bar is actually, is present. Um, and, but basically, they, they didn't really get anywhere. That's called a doji. And that's often when... If you see that, let's say that it happens over a day, that's when you kind of think, mm, I wonder where this is going here. I'm always conscious that when we see a doji, uh, is the up, you know, pushing it up, running out of steam. And that's where, that's where I'm quite conscious. Uh, okay, so um, do you buy the stock or sell puts when the RT is rising parabolically? Bruce, I'm always, I'm always conscious that I, when I see something, anything changing parabolically, because I'm going to tell you a story about that later on. Um, personally, I love selling puts. That's just inherent in my nature. I like focusing on my income. I like the fact that um that the downside is cushioned. I like the fact that if the upside takes off, well then of course I can close a position early. So it suits me to do that. Um, in the case of Hecla mining, on reflection, it would have been better to buy the stock, but I was okay ultimately with with what happened then. Um, very good question. F one two invest asks why not buy calls? I'll tell you why. Is I don't like paying for time. I don't buy calls unless I think that, um, that like, have I ever bought a call? I've sold lots of calls, covered ones that is. I have sold puts, I have bought puts, I have put spreads on. 
I generally have not bought calls. The only time I'd buy a call is if I really thought something that the market didn't, that, that, that I had a piece of information that the market hadn't got yet or where I thought everybody had absolutely thrown in the towel, which I did, as you all know, when, um, when it came to Carnival. And I did very well there um, through selling my put again because I got a lovely juicy premium. The thing is, when you see something going crazy, it's not just that I'm buying time, that I'm buying volatility as well. Like that's pretty expensive. Then you need the market to be, the price, the increase in price needs to be greater than the effect of the impact of volatility and the time value as well. Not quite my bag unless it's something that I think might really explode. And I rarely come across those. Um, so, uh, yeah, so that seems to be, I think I've answered all the questions there about the, the buyers and sellers and so on. Okay, right. So that was my second point today is to tell you about if picking stocks, then RT can be your guide. Now, third thing is what happens if you want to buy a stock, not necessarily for the short term, but for the long term? And you want, potentially you might sell it uh, pretty soon. So let me tell you about a search. Pop back over here to Europe for a moment. Okay, pop back over here. So I'm going to show you a Unisearch. It's available in both, but it comes across slightly differently in both. And the Unisearch is called, let me go over to it here, uh, High Flyers. And I'm just going to pull it up for you here. H-I, H-I, da, 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 da. High flyers, okay. So over here in Europe, and I'm just going to, uh, yeah. Uh, Jerry says, "How do I know if a put is overpriced?" Again, happy to come back to that. That there, Jerry. By the way, guys, loving the questions today. Please do keep them coming. Keep them coming. I'm only delighted to hear from you. Right. So, in this case, um, high flyers is a very simple search. Again, I can't enlarge you in the search, but I'll just talk you through it. Two things, right? Number one is that relative timing is above one point two five. Right, so 1.25 is not just favorable, but it's above average and favorable as well. So you want to stock with good direction, you, you want to stock with good dynamics, and you want good magnitude behind the stock, right? For it to be pushing up. And in addition, you want RV, you want relative value to be above 1.25. And I'm just going to check in again with the team in the US. If you could just pop the free stock analysis report, um, a link for anybody to get the free stock analysis report, please, that would be great. Um, the reason that I'm just asking for that is just for anybody who's not familiar with the terminology that they can test out their own stocks and get an understanding of, of what they are. Okay, so uh, RT here is above 1.25 and RV, RV is relative value and it's long term price appreciation potential. So what we want to see there is the stock's ability to uh, increase over the long term. So as you can see, we've got the RT, which is quite short term and it's technical, etc. And then we have RV, which is fundamental and more long term. So it's interesting, though, right? So I ran this search I, in preparation to, to meet you today. I ran this search during the week and I thought, I wondered how many stocks I'd find. I said, I wonder what I find 20. And that's no problem. I wonder what I find 30. And. 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 The answer is no problem. But actually, if I go to 40, you get a pretty similar list. We actually have something pretty similar there. So as you can see here, is actually it's, it's not that easy to find stocks that are have got both things together. So then what I did was I said, you know, well, this is all very interesting. Um, another thing I observed before I get on to where I'm going is all of these buy recommendations, which is which I thought was interesting as well. So, you know, there, there's an awful lot of, uh, behind this search. Uh, on, on the face of it, it looks deceptively familiar or deceptively simple, but there's actually an awful lot going on behind it. We're looking for technical and fundamental together. We're looking for them not just to be favorable, but to be above average. And then they're ranked by VST as well. So again, while all that's really interesting, what I did then was that I popped over here then to Unis or to Backtester. And in the back test, I'm not going to run it for you now. I did it. Uh, here's one I made earlier. Uh, I'm going to, going to show you that I did it here is that I actually ran the back test whereby you went in in a market timing indicator, which was the confirmed call up. So when you get the market timing um, indicator to go in, you go in, you buy the top 10 stocks of high flyers. Uh, I said, absolutely sell any stock, any individual stock, if it gets a sell recommendation. Then I also said, if it gets a sell recommendation and you sell a stock, well then go go back in and then buy a stock instead, uh, buy the top stock there in high flyers. And then finally, if if the if we get a confirmed call down, then out everything is out. 
And you know what I came across, right? You know what I came across? And this brings me right back now to the beginning. Is this uh, transactions, summary report. Okay. In here. Yeah, let me sc- let me zoom in there now. Zoom, 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 zoom. Okay. What I found interesting about this is, look at this, is actually there was just as many losers as winners. Just as many. However, the difference is, is that the gain here in that period of time, I ran it from the 2nd of December 2019 to when I was running the test this week on the 15th of December, 30% gain. But, but the key thing here is that this search enabled us to hold on to our winners for longer. That's what it enabled us to do because of the discipline of the search. And that's what I'm trying to say is that that really, really matters. Even if you have lose, even if you have losing stocks, if you can have winning stocks and you're bound to, this is just what happens in the stock market. You are bound to, but it's really important that you know when and how the stock continues um or how how to gauge when the stock is continuing with its upside or whether it's not so here 31 losers 32 winners but overall you came up with a really really great search here um the gain as i say was 30 percent. but the other thing i thought was interesting about this is this the max drawdown despite the tumultuous roller coaster of the year that was in it the drawdown was still only 11.11 percent so that one i thought really interesting wanted to share that with you in fact what i'm going to do is i am going to um that uh the that particular strategy when i looked at it and back tested and everything that will be in my views that will be released tonight and will be in the system by tomorrow morning so when i say that what i mean is so an an analysis an an in-depth analysis into uh, high flyers is you can go over here to views. Now it's not here yet because it's not released yet, but you go over here to views and if you click on essay viewer up here, then you will find all of my essays. They're all all in there. And the one that will be released, that will be in the system by tomorrow is going to be on high flyers. Okay, let me just pop back over here and see. Um, Terry, what was my stop on my high flyer strategy? Very simple, Terry. On a stock base, Specifically, when I was looking at at um, the stock based stop, it was when the stock gets a sell recommendation. I can just show you. Uh, I can ju- just show you there is. I went. Ju- I'll just show you there on, on back tester so that you can actually see it. Um, is that if I look at the report there again, I'm a transact. Not sorry, not the transaction. I'm going to show you the summary report. Um, and I just zoom right in. There we go. Okay, I'm just going to zoom right in there now, Terry stick with me okay and there you go oh there we go rec equals s in other words when the stock gets a sell recommendation you can just see it right here when the stock gets a sell recommendation then i sell the stock now if the market gets a confirmed all confirmed call down sell everything i said sell everything then that's in there that was that that particular search now Uh, Jerry says, which country? In this case, Jerry, I did this search in VectorVest Europe. Um, I'm managing director of VectorVest Europe. So this is the one that I'm naturally most at home in. And I've, as you know, I've bought and sold options in right across Europe and also uh, a lot as well. A lot of options through the US. Uh, Bruce asks me, where are my essays? I'll tell you that now, Bruce. So all where it is, is over here to in VectorVest Europe again, which of course you all have access to now. And uh, in here in views, uh, if you click on views and click on essay viewer, then you will see all of my essays. They're all in there. Actually, a, a summary of the um, spotlight in retail that I shared there while that the last episode of Fantastic Female Fridays is in there and loads, loads more as well. OK, um, Incognito also asks me, what is Hecla Mining you keep mentioning? It's a stock. It's a stock that I came across Uh uh when i ran when i when i was looking at the market back in may and also i wrote that's also in in one of my essays as well just the, the background of how i did that um but it's the ticker code is hl um so i'm not looking at it today uh markets in a different space the you know an awful lot has changed since then so i'm not looking at it today but that's why i'm telling you about my wins right throughout the year is that the market and the stock need to be you know talking to each other hello maria great to have you back here super um super it's brilliant uh brilliant indeed to have you delight delighted that that you're here with us today okay guys number four is what if you're considering selling now i want to tell you how rt prevented me from making a big mistake would we head back over to the us okay sounds good um back over here to the us now i want to tell you about a time i was ready 
to make a big problem. Now, tell me who here again was talking about parabolic? Somebody, someone of you there mentioned about parabolic. Uh, anyway, I'll I'll tell you why I am looking for that. Um, let me just click over here to. I'm going to pull up another graph. And this time I'm going to pull up silver, SLV, right? Because I have a couple of stories to tell you about this one. So Bruno says, is there the RT indicator in Weeble? The RT indicator, Bruno, you'll only find it in VectorVest. That's all. Okay. Uh, great stuff. Thanks, guys. Okay. Now, over here in SLV, right? SLV is the ETF to track silver. Now, back when I started selling options, not, not at the beginning, But back in 2011 was a superb time to be selling options. Let me go back. Let me go back there now, right? Let me go back. And I want to tell you about this is what parabolic looks like. Now, I'm telling you, no matter how high a strike I sold, no matter how much premium I took in, here, what this is what it just, the stock just kept rising. And, and it went on for months, months and months. I literally used to be selling put options on SLV over and over and over again. And what's the problem with that? Is that you think this is just going to keep going forever. And the volatility in SLV was sh was shocking. And obviously, of course, I was getting that. I was selling lovely time value. I was I was doing all sorts. And But what happens when you see something going parabolic, which is this shape, is then, of course, it can precipitate a cliff fall afterwards. So... I, after that, I said, you know what? I really don't like SLV. But anyway, we made friends again. And the thing about it was the volatility available in SLV was lovely. It was just lovely from the point of view of selling options. So on anyway, look, here's what happened then with SLV. As you can see, then it fell and fell and fell, right? So I ended up, I think I sold an option again, roundabout somewhere. It could have been here. It could have been here. I can't remember now. But this particular chart is what I want to point out to you, is I was getting sick of it, right? I was getting properly sick of watching SLV fall because I, you're not going to sell options on that graph, are you? Of course you're not. But if you end up where you actually have the stock because you sold a put and you have to take on the stock afterwards, then, um, then you're stuck with it, right? Or else you're not, or else you sell it. So I was getting right sick of this now. And look what happened. Let me just scroll right in. I remember thinking, you know what? I'm going to pull the plug. I am going to pull the plug here on this stock. But what happened here was that, look, the SLV, as, as I was looking here at SLV, the stock price was falling. However, the RT was rising. And the RT started to, I could, you could tell in the RT, like when you're at, when you're at a graph, when you're looking at a graph like this, right? Um, you can see, okay, right, the stock price is rising here. But I mean, that's a, that's a couple, that's a dollar or two. It's not really a whole lot. But what I could see here is what's called a bullish divergence. And this is where the price was falling. But on the other hand, the stock was rising. That was what I started to see. And then, I, so basically this chart was telling me, stay where you are, it'll be okay. And what happened? Let's keep going and going. Therefore, I got right here, got the stock, all was well, saw this head and shoulders and got out. Then I sold more. I sold more at a later stage, right? Probably again, maybe the wrong time. But then same thing happened is, let me just zone in there again, is here. And it's actually even more visible here, right? Here, here let, me just, let me just expand this out a little bit. This is where... The share price was falling, but RT was rising. Bullish divergence. Bullish divergence. Do not ignore them. So this is where you can see the share price here was falling, but the RT was rising. And the RT is a great way of telling you that the buyers are starting to win the war. That is what's going on. And as you can see then, look what happens next. On and on and on and on we go. Then silver topped out. And I, I haven't been back in there since. So all of this was going on between 2010, 11 and 12. And I haven't been in there since. I took a position in a couple of different stocks then. Um, as one of them then, of course, being Hecla Mining during the summer. Not really into it now. But um, that is, I would absolutely say, I would absolutely say it can be a very, very good indicator. Now, just going to pop on over here. Um, Bruce says, are these two criteria, RT and RV, the only criteria in your search? So, Bruce, what I would say there is in the high flyer search, yes. Now, that's pre-built already in Vectorvest Europe, okay? So, that is RV above 1.25, 1.25, 1.25, 1.25, 1.25, 1.25, 1.25, 1.25, 1.25, 1.25, 1.25, 1.25, 1.25, 1.25, 1.25
RT above 1.25 and then also um, this the search is automatically ranked by VST. Uh, X-ray Zap says, new here, what is RT? You're very welcome, very, very welcome indeed. And um, you, what, uh, what, what RT is, is its relative timing. Now, I just see there that um, we haven't been able to get the free stock analysis report to you guys. So I'm just going to pop that in there now myself. Uh, let me just do that for you so uh, I can make sure that everybody gets it. Um, and what I'm just going to do is just make sure now that I get a note there to the team um, to report the FSA in the chat for everybody. Okay, so uh, that now should that now should should be well in its way. So RT is relative timing, is the um, stock's ability to look at its direction. So whether it's rising or falling. So RT above one is generally rising. RT below one is generally falling. Um, it also looks at the dynamics. So whether it is you know whether it's doing so in a really volatile way or very calm way. And then the other thing RT does is it looks at whether a stock has got great magnitude to the upside or to the downside so that is particularly what it is okay so uh hope that hope that explains it and again i'm just going to as i said just sent a message there to to the team to make sure that they pop in the free stock analysis uh, report to you yep they've just come back to me there now to say that they are on the case okay uh so and again you'll see a full explanation of rt in there and you'll also be able to look at the rt of your own stock and it's super simple above one is favorable below one is unfavorable you're more than welcome, X-ray. More than welcome, indeed. Um, right. Okay. Let's let's move on then to my my. So that, just going to recap so far my my four points, right? Because I've loads more to tell you. Number one is, in order to hold on to your winners, let RT be your guide. Let RT tell you if the buyers are winning the war against the sellers. And like in my case, I am not giving up my upside just because I think, oh well, you know, I made my money back, or I've made ten percent, or fifteen percent, or whatever. Is let RT be your guide. Number two, if you're looking for stocks that are really moving very, very quickly, rather than looking at the number that is RT, look at something like a search where I showed you where two weeks ago RT was below one, um, whereas now it's above one. And that will show you something that's that's changing very, very quickly. Number three is if you're picking stocks for both the short and the long term. So you're picking it for the short term, but ideally it'd be nice if you could hold on to it for a longer time frame. Then what, what I suggest you do is use something with RT. So it might be RV, like I showed you there in High Flyers. And again, a full deep dive into High Flyers is going to be in my views in the program by tomorrow morning. Now, if you think of selling, watch out for what is it? Bullish divergence, a bullish divergence. And that's what I'm showing you right here on my screen. This is where the share price may be falling, but the RT is rising. Do not ignore those. Now, the opposite can happen as well, by the way. But I certainly, um, if I had if I had closed out my position on silver without looking at that, I would have just left it on the table. Despite the fact that RT was quite plainly telling me, no, 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 Susan, no, you're grand. Um, okay, then before I come on to number, my fifth point, I'm just going to pop in over here just to see what John says. John says, what about adding RT ranking that is part of industries to make sure the industry is moving with it? Yeah, you certainly can. Um, just for again, I'm very conscious and I'm delighted to welcome people who aren't from Vectorvest. You can certainly do that if you go over to viewer and you go to sector viewer. And then uh, over here in sector viewer. That is not what I'm looking for. Sorry, because I was clicking on stock. I was going to say they're not sectors. OK, let me go in there into industry. OK, so in industry here, for example, um, you can actually see the the sector. You can actually see the RT of the industry and you can also see the RT of you can see the RT of the sector and you can see the RT of the industry. And then if you double click in here in media, OK, let me just double click. Oh, yeah, it's coming up there behind it. OK, um, well, when you when you double click in there, then you can also see then a list of stocks that are behind the, that. Now, I'm just going to go on to the stock viewer there just to make that point. So you can see here, for example, uh, digital turbine here. When If you click on the stock and just spring it right down. Okay, follow me, follow me, fo follow, 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 follow me right down here. See software in business. 
So software is the sector and then business is the industry within the sector. Now, John has a great idea here, which is that you can add an industry delta into your search. Yes, you can. Let's pop on over here and do it. I'm going to go to Unisearch and I can go in here and I can go from industry and I'm going to filter by industry group. So let me do that. And I want, uh, sorry, I can go back there. I'm going to go, go filter by. Now, I'm actually thinking, John, what you want to do is something slightly different, isn't it? This is where you want the industry delta. So what I need to do is filter by the industry group here. And I now I'm just trying to think here because when you're actually adding in an industry delta, are you trying to do that before? or after you actually select the search. So what I'm saying here is in the case of my tech systems is that if I double click on that stock, I'll be able to go in and I'll be able to see the, I'll be able to see the industry. And then specifically within the industry, then I would be looking at the, de the delta in there. So John says no under capital pre Okay, right, yeah, yeah, all right. So then what I can do here is stocks, and now I get you. Do the RT, relative timing, and in here I have delta. Um, now, actually, it's interesting, John, what I did back, when did I do it? Oh, my God. When actually, I think when I found Hecla Mining, I actually went and I did the same thing. I looked for the RT to have changed by a significant amount as well. And I had done that. I think I put it in for 10 days or something. So Delta, guys, is how much things change over a period of time. So um, it's just interesting that, that you say that. So this is where you want something to change. Or alternatively, you can have it where it changes by a certain amount as well, or over a certain time frame, all sorts of things that you, you can do in there. Okay, so you do it differently. You do industries. Okay. Okay, let me go back there. You do industries, capital appreciation. Oh, you're doing it that way. Okay. RT. So yeah, that's the way you can. Yeah, I see what you mean. So actually what you're doing is that you're going to rank through the industries included in the search as distinct from through the search into the stock then look at the, the industry yeah it's an interesting way of doing it um zakaria said can i please explain rs i would i would be delighted to do it um and i just want to uh the, the only thing i'll say is um that it, it just would take me a little bit off track now zakaria so so st stick with me um um And just checking here with the team. Uh, okay, so just just making sure that that, that that they're that they're taking care of you. Okay, now fifth point that I want to ask you today is, um, what if you're wrong, right? What if you're wrong? So what if I was wrong? If I go back over here to the graph. I see uh, Bruce there was asking, he's saying on the divergence, aren't you drawing lines in different places in the chart? Okay, John, let me, let me just, or Bruce, let me just zoom right in there now. Okay, let me just zoom right in there now. Okay, right here. Let me just zoom right there, right in here. Now, here was where I was looking at the divergence, right, right over here. Okay, so you can see here, it's maybe if I just change my line, I'm just going to make the lines harder. Okay, so just letting you know there now um, that the free stock analysis is now pinned to the top of the chat. So anybody who wants to uh, to get that, you can just pop in there and you'll, Zakaria, actually in your case, that's where you'll see RS, that's where you'll see relative safety. And in addition, um, anybody who's new to X-Ray Zap, uh, you mentioned that you're new and you're not familiar with RT. If you just pop a stock in there, you'll get an explanation of what RT is in there as well. Okay, so uh, let me see there now. If I go back over here, I'm going to click on the on the line. Um, that's not working for me. So let me just move over. Just give my mouse a bit of a break here. No, it's not happening for me. Okay. And my system has frozen. Okay, let me pop over. I'm just going to give. Uh, just just going to just going to do it over here. Oh, okay. Now I know what's after happening. Is that the two screens weren't talking to each other. Now, that should make that line easier. Now, do you see it there, John? Sorry, Bruce, I don't know why I keep calling you John. Uh, see there, Bruce? 
and then if I also click on this line down here okay I'm just gonna click the style okay and that's also solid use so you see the way the two lines are right on top of each other um, see the way here here so at this stage obviously uh, at this stage I'm seeing the share price falling now what I'm actually starting to see here is the RT starting to balance out but I probably wouldn't have known that yet um, whereas on the other hand um, on the other hand is that over here it became quite clear that now the stock was rising and it looked like it was falling again and remember that at this stage at this stage Bruce here's what I'm looking at I'm looking at fall 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 so what RT is pointing out to me here is that this is starting to turn around in fact what if I really go back further I can actually see that RT has been doing that for some time if I just adjust this now but again it's it's hard to see it it's hard to see things when um it's hard to see things without looking seeing the future obviously so that is why if i just bring this right back here if i go back here let me just go back right up here back to the benefit of, of hindsight here um and let me scroll back down here okay now see see there see that line now in fact and i mean i'm what to do with just right view see the way this line is falling this line is rising that's what i'm talking about that is what uh bullish uh, bullish divergences now to go back to so just to go back to, to my fifth point which is what if I'm wrong what if I am wrong what if genuinely I am wrong what if I everything that I call is wrong Bruce says better now thanks you're more than welcome Bruce no problem so on uh, the hot stocks panel I've shared a couple of times now what I what I spoke about there back in October and uh, one of the stocks one of the stocks that I picked out at that stage arising from the future of travel the the episode that we had there with Mary McKenna was I picked Royal Caribbean now Royal Caribbean has been on a royal roller coaster since then again I'm sure none of you need to know what I did because you can guess I sold a put got that lovely volatility into my account and um it's due to expire not this time around because today of course is expiry for options in December it's next time and um the thing is what if I'm wrong and even if you think back to high flyers you will be wrong a lot of the time I don't like being wrong <laughs> but on the other hand I know that it's part and parcel of what comes with the stock market so here's what I would say to you is first things first I generally like to find a dividend to cushion a loss in case in case it goes wrong that was what that is what I have with ASM the stock that I showed you there at the beginning so if I'm wrong now at this stage the dividend yield is down to about 0.8 percent but still I like to find I like to find that number two is in case I'm wrong I like to take in the option premium that cushions any losses, which is exactly what happened with Royal Caribbean. I sold a put, stock price fo fell. I still knew, though, that there was a significant cushion. And then the stock price took off. Now it's fallen back down again. I'm, I'm still well in the money. But at the same time, I always think about, okay, what if I'm wrong? And the third thing is, third thing is, is that I would always suggest that you sell when the reason that you bought is no longer there. There's certainly, there's been several, several, several stocks over the years that I've sold because just the reason I bought was no longer there. If I look for a low P ratio and the P ratio went up, I sold. If I look for um, a stock with a 5% dividend yield and the dividend yield fell to 1%, I sold. So th this is why I'm saying to you, it's so important that you know why you buy in the first place. In my case, I bought ASM because it was the top 10, uh, top 10 VST, um, top 10 VST stock specifically it was top at the time that I sold the option uh, if I look at it today and I can if I was to pop over there let's go over there in Europe pop over there if I was to go over to viewer and I look at the stock viewer today and here it is it's still in is it still in the top 10 let's just check if it's in the top 10 yep it is the 10th stock in terms of the VST so you can see that the RT is lovely uh, the RS is very good as well. That's relative safety and a uh, relative value. The one point that I mentioned earlier, and I, you know, I could go on and on. I certainly could could go on here um, analyzing the stock for you. But the reason I bought was because it was in the top ten VST, and that's the reason that I'm still there. And but the RT is the reason I'm not selling a covered call. I'm holding on to the upside myself. Okay, now also I want to. Um, I know time is moving on here, so I'm I'm just going to tell you my next five small wins. Um, that are certainly in my point of view anyway that are, are certainly very helpful as regards getting ready for for what's to come first thing is this is how do you treat volatility now many of you have heard how I treat it right number one I sell it through through generating income through put options 
But secondly, what I will also tell you is that I don't buy it. And that is why going back there to the person um, who asked me, why don't I buy calls? I don't like paying for volatility. When it comes to my own portfolio and there's plenty of volatility in it, that is where I kind of, you know, filter out the noise because there's several stocks that have gone all sorts of all sorts of ways throughout the year. I'm sure you're the same. But I just always go back to why did we buy the stock? Why did we buy the stock? Why did we buy the stock? The fact that it's gone up 10% or down 10% is the reason that we bought still there. And that's what I did when I saw ASM falling down to 121. That's what I did when I saw Royal Caribbean falling down to 53. That's exactly, that's exactly what I did. Like I've told you before, I always, always document the reason that we bought a share. Something I learned from Kevin Crow years and years ago. And I'll tell you how to do it. You can obviously just jot it down. I've shown you how to do it before on Google, um, Google, Google Sheets. I've shown, obviously you can just write it down in notebook. You can also do it right here in the VectorVest system. So if I just go to, let me take HelloFresh here, for example. Just going to go onto that stock there. And again, that now might have, yeah, there we go. So here's HelloFresh. If I want to, over here, if I want to document, because uh, we bought actually a stock similar to this when he was in the UK back in April, doing doing really, really well. Um, but again, lots of stocks, if one would have bought back in April, are doing really well. Here's, so all you need to do is simply put in a freehand line. Now you might say, hold on now, Susan, you're putting in a line. You see actually in there, nestled in there is note. So in there, I can put a note and I can say, for example, um, defensive stock, defensive stock in an interesting sector, uh, etc. Right, so I always do that. So that's what I want to just, it's important that you think about that. So I'm very clear, very, very clear that we have taken advantage of a lot of volatility in the market this year. Very clear about that. Very clear about how I do it. Um, very clear about how I don't want to do it. But also what I think we've been better at this year. When I say we, I talk about my husband and I because we, we invest together. I think we've been better this year at stripping out the noise and the volatility that was going crazy. Now, I would have said that he was better at getting into the market um, than I was. And I think I would have probably been somebody who was more unable to see when you when you could use volatility to your advantage and how we might take a position according to that like i told you about how we took on the position in hecla mining like looking at lo lo looking out for bullish divergences etc so that's point number six just going to pop in over here um jan conrad says to me do you use certain spreadsheets to keep track of all your trading or just portfolios and vector best both uh, both jan yeah so i create a google sheet as well and i have the prices that come in live um and then also i put portfolios as well as a super tool the only reason that i don't have everything in vectorvest is because of the different programs so let's say you'd have a portfolio in vectorvest us and a portfolio in vectorvest europe when i have my google sheet have them all together now uh, david says how do you know when an option is overpriced and i think somebody else mentioned that as well the the, the straightforward answer is to use options pro <laughs> An options pro and talk to somebody like Scott Wheeler and he'll tell you in a second, right? But apart from that, here is, here's the way I've done it. Now, do you know what I'm going to do? Do you know what I'm going to do? I am going to tell you that I spoke at absolute length about this in August, in like superb depth about this back in August. Um, I'm just going to ask the team there to share this link in the chat. Guys, could I just ask ask one of you there, could you go into the August International User Group for Stan? It's on YouTube. And you might just let, you might just pop the link there of when I was a guest speaker on that, please. So I'm just gonna, just gonna show you, I'm just gonna show you what the link looks like anyway. So I'm just gonna, so just pop over here for a second. So it was VectorVest User Group, um, International um, August, 2020 you should be able to find it there now pretty quickly yeah in here so i'm just going to mute mute this now Stephen so e now okay so if we i'm just going to mute that so you'll see in here if i skip over the ads here for a second uh here's where i was giving an example and i particularly referred to my way 
um, that I look at the way in which options are overpriced and see now if I can pop in there. Now it's a long video, so there it is. Okay, there, there we go. Just wait there for it to come up. Um, so that this is the this is the sample sheet that I that I had and that I shared with people. So you can see there. Back then I was talking about ASM. Back then I was actually XLE. Yeah, that was a, an an energy ETF that we had. Um, Paychex. Yeah, that's that was another one. Another one that was doing really well at the time. Still is, by the way. Uh, and loads more, loads more in there that um that I had picked out. So if you want to, uh, you can pop back on that. Then it's um it's it's helpful. Bruce said you can get an idea of whether an option is overpriced by putting implied volatility and historic volatility margin in the same chart. Yeah, you can. That's pretty advanced, Bruce. I have to say, in terms of looking at things like that, um, I you know as I say, if if I was to really really get get right into into the detail of it there. In, in one way or to get into the detail to simplify it but certainly that that is another way as well so um as i say there guys i'm j just because i don't want to pull up my own the the youtube show that's that's going right out, out live right now because then it'll complicate things so again i'm just just going to ask the team there if you go back there and you look at uh, or if you search for factor best user group international august 2020 you'll find it you'll find us there as well okay i'm just gonna close that close that down there right number seven Number seven, and don't worry, the, the rest of these are, are much faster, right? Number seven, the seventh thing that I want to say to you is this, is that have a way to test out your own ideas. Absolutely have a way to test out your own ideas. Now, my husband is remarkably talented at sending me a WhatsApp and saying, I think we should buy this. And I never just go, okay, boom, let's go. This whole honor and obey thing now, right? How about no? <laughs> um, I always have a way to test out ideas myself. And actually, that has been... right over here in hiding in plain sight right throughout all of my fantastic free female friday sessions i'm just going to expand it there so that, that you can see and these are the things that i look for um i just want to make sure now that you can see it do you know what it actually might be easier if i do this if i uh if i just keep keep the keep the screen in there tighter okay so i generally look for earnings money goes where money grows as steve chapel says himself all the time uh in addition then uh pe ratio it's always something i do not like paying for overpriced stocks i do not like it at all now i'm happy to have overpriced stocks if the rt is telling me they're going to get even more overpriced but i do not like paying for overpriced stocks so i always look to the pe dy i always look for my dividend yield you know why is because i want the cushion in case i'm wrong and i like generating the income anyway uh, i also always look for vst it is my favorite indicator in all of vectorvest Um, always look at the CI, CI's comfort index. Again, always. Um, that's my second, my second favorite indicator. And then I look for volume, relative safety. Uh, I like to look at value, uh, the stop loss and the relative value as well. So whenever, 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 as I say, my lovely husband texts me and says, "Oh, I think we should buy this." This is what I do. I pop on over here into Vectorvest. I open up a chart. I have a look at it, and then I test out all of these indicators along with it. And if I've said that too quickly, I understand. By the way, um, I am also going to be writing my views over the next couple of weeks all around what we're talking about today. So uh, as well as that, of course, you will get your follow up email. If I hope, I do hope that you've all um, just registered for VectorVest.com forward slash FFF. The reason for that is that is how you get the email afterwards with the full outline of everything that I've been talking about. So it doesn't cost anything or anything to sign up for it. So just to make sure that's how I always make sure you get the resources afterwards. Okay. Now, um, that's the seventh thing. The eighth thing is a phrase that I'm going to tell you uh, arising from an Irish poet. After all, we would have to have, I just, I'm, what I'm just trying to do here now is I'm just trying to bring you back here where I'm talking to myself. And there's an Irish poet called Seamus Heaney. I'm sure some of you may be familiar with him. And he says, if we can winter this one out, we can summer anywhere. And I, li I like that idea, right? It sounds, it sounds lovely. So if I can winter, if we can winter this one out, we can summer anywhere. In other words, if you can just get through the, the, the bad times, well, then you can enjoy the good times anywhere. And here's where I just want to talk about, you know, as we do reflect on the year, March obviously was very, very difficult, really difficult time in the market. April offered abundant opportunity. But as, as uh, Warren Buffett said, there was blood in the streets. And you would have been either ridiculous or sublime to be going back in. The thing is, these are all very emotive phrases, aren't they? They're all very, very emotive phrases. So instead, what I suggest is, despite the poetry and despite the Buffettisms, 
is simply look to the market timing indicators to decide when you're going to get in and when you're going to get out. Now, on a market basis, I've shown you a couple of ways when you look at a stock, but from a market point of view, don't be waiting for poetic, um, you know, insurgence to be happening on CNBC or anything else like that. Make your decision based on the objective analysis. So when we did get back in, we got back in in April um, and uh, what I absolutely what I absolutely say is um, that it's so important that um, you look at the market timing indicators and let those be your guide. Let those absolutely be your guide and let them show you whether now is a good time overall to get in or whether it's not. And that instead of Seamus Heaney saying, you know, if you winter this one out, rather than trying to make those decisions is instead go in and have a look at the market timing indicators or the confirm calls or whatever your market your market timing indicator of choice is whether it's even a vector vest one or not the key point is go and take a look at that rather than saying you know relying on gut feeling or you know how is the sentiment or whatever is you don't have to do that it's all done there for you it truly is all done there there for you now the ninth thing i want to say is I learned this one a couple of years ago, right? So th this isn't quite a win for 2020, but it's certainly certainly wor worthwhile sharing with you. And that is, know the difference between doing nothing and inaction. Some people did nothing throughout the year because they just threw their hands up at the market and said, you know, this place is just crazy. It's going up, it's going down. We see dramatic stimulus going in. We see lockdowns happening. We see second lockdowns happening. We see repeated lockdowns. There's volatility around elections. We don't know if it's going to be a clean election. Oh, Just let me out of here. Now, if the market is not for you, it's not for you. Simple as. But there is a big difference. There genuinely is a big difference between inaction and doing nothing. Inaction is what I did from the middle of March until the start of April. And during that time frame, I was consciously not taking position in the market. But that wasn't doing nothing. That was that was being inactive in the market. My my market decision, the stock position I was taking was to not take position. But that was still a position, if you know what I mean. There's a very, 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 very big difference in there in between the two. Very, very big difference indeed. So that is what I would also say to you is know the difference between inaction and doing nothing. Inaction may be a decision that's well worthwhile taking, which is to not go in, uh, maybe to stay in cash. Like personally, I don't really like shorting. It's not really up my street. I'll buy puts for you. But I don't, uh, I don't necessarily like shorting. So if I'm not in the market, it's because I believe cash is a better place to be until buying opportunities arise again. And, uh, and then, then, I, then I go in after that. Now, the last thing I'm going to say to you is this, is um, enjoy it. The market is there and VectorVest is there to, to be enjoyed. Enjoy the investing part, but understand what really matters to you. And here's where I see people be being thrown off a little bit. Is it about making money or is it about beating the market? I often see people, they'll look at a search, they look at a unit search and then they'll say, oh, no, no, actually, no, I'm not interested in that search because it didn't beat the market. If I was to ask any of you right now, do you, is your portfolio this year, is it, ac is it beating the market? A lot of you won't know. And that is because ultimately you're probably looking at whether a stock is up or down as opposed to whether it's beating the S&P 500 or the FTSE or whatever. So that's what I would say is understand what really matters to you. And if it is simply making money, well, then look at ways to make money simply. The second thing I would ask is, is it that you want to make a return or is it that you want the feeling that you're doing something? Because if you want to make a return, often doing or being inactive can be an answer or simply leaving the market, just go, just go. And sometimes I say that to my husband, I'd say, you know, we're fully invested. You know, we don't need to keep looking for the next best thing or now what we always need to do is to critically Um, analyze the positions that we have to decide whether we still want them or not that's for sure but just remember when you like so in the case of ASM there ASM is doing its thing so do I need to keep going back in and looking at the top VST stock now and saying okay I'm going to sell that one and I'm going to be replacing it by that one that's the thing is that I'm interested in making a return in the market not necessarily just being busy with it and that's that's kind of counterintuitive because if I wanted to play music right I want to learn how to play the piano I, I don't, by the way, but um, I if I was uh, looking to play the piano, I know that the way to improve is for me to do more and more and more and more practice. The thing is with the stock market is that if I'm more and more and more active, that doesn't necessarily mean that I'm going to 
do any better when it comes to return. But if you're if if you want the enjoyment of doing, be aware of it. The the third thing I'll say is I've met loads of people in the Vectorvest community, loads of people who never invest. They just like the the excitement of looking at earnings reports and running searches and doing back tests and being at events like this and participating in Tampa and a range of other different things like that. Um, that's what that's what they love to do. And as a result, um, that's so completely fine. You don't have to be an investor to be part of our community. All we want to do is to enable you to be more informed, more educated, more confident, more comfortable in the decisions that, that, that you take. And the last thing I'll say to you is, do you want to find something that simply works and then stick with it? Or do you simply want to learn more? Now, if you want to learn more, Vectorvest has a bazillion opportunities to do so. Whether it's the weekly trending Thursday, whether it is the upcoming Tampa session, whether it is the options paycheck, whether it is my own show here at Fantastic Female Fridays, we will constantly enable you to learn more and more and more and more all the time. I promise you that. We really are quite good at this. But If you also simply want to find something that works for you, well then find it and be happy with it and then backtest it. Now, personally, I am that type of person where I always want to learn more. Uh, and I've, uh, I did the Trade Like a Pro course with Steve Chappell. I did that back in 2014. That dramatically helped my ability to be able to read the charts. Like I was telling you there about dojis and candlesticks and being able to read how buyers and sellers are interacting. Um, lots of, I've obviously have done lots and lots of over, over the years and options and trying out different strategies and so on like that. Um, and also, when you're in my position, uh, also, there's always somebody that will ask you about a search that maybe that you haven't looked at before or they'll they'll have their own nuance in a search that you haven't tried before. So I'm always happy to do that. But at the end of the day, I also su- know and I'm super comfortable with my top BST stocks. That just works. So on that note, ladies and indeed gentlemen, I've gone way over time. I've gone way over time, but whistle stop tour of the top 10 wins that I've had. By the way, as I'm doing these, please do pop in there to the chat. Tell me your wins this year, just before we go. Um, number one is hold on to your winners and let RT be your guide to decide when to sell or when to sell a cover call. Number two is picking stocks that are explosive, uh, then let RT be your guide. Number three, if you're picking stocks for the short term and the long term, I suggest that you would accompany RT with something then like RV. Um, and the search that I mentioned there was high flyers in the in Vectorvest Europe. Um, now there's also an equivalent ver- vision version, but slightly different in the US. Number four, if you are considering selling, look at RT and observe observe if there is a bullish divergence. Number five, always consider what if you're wrong. What if this goes wrong? In my way, when I do that, I look for dividends. I look for um, selling put income, or else I know when I'm going to sell, and I sell. And the reason I bought is no longer there. Number six, decide how you want to treat volatility. In my case, I'm happy to sell volatility through options, but I am not happy to buy it. Not happy to buy it through calls unless I really think something is going to go crazy. Because if you're buying a high volatile stock through a call, you have to pay for the time value and high volatility. That stock would really want to do something special. Number seven is it's great to get ideas for stocks and you know maybe you read about them or somebody tells you about them. Always have your own set of criteria. that you can test that stock against, and I shared what mine are. Number eight, if you can winter it out here, you can summer anywhere, in the words of Seamus Heaney. Rather than rely on emotion, use market timing indicators to determine when the summer and the winter is actually taking place, and even when the leaves are starting to turn, they're pretty good at telling you. Number nine, understand the difference between inaction and doing nothing. And number 10, enjoy it, guys, and understand what really, really matters. So on that note, I'm going to wish you all a most wonderful, wonderful festive season. Have an amazing Christmas from all of us here at Vector Vest, from me in Dublin, from the production team in the US, and from all of us right around the world at Vector Vest. I'm going to, I'm going to see you uh, for our first episode of the year next year, and I'm going to be in Tampa as well. We're going, going to be part of the live stream team as well. So as I say, on behalf of me and all of the team at Vector Vest, Vector Vest US, Europe, and so on, thank you so much indeed for making Fantastic Female Fridays are reality. I wish you every success and every best wish. Bye.